Chris Hook, Senior Group Director of Communications and Marketing at Cadence Design Systems, talks to host Doug Simon on PR's Top Pros Talk. AI is everywhere. It's being talked about. You need to use more of it, etc. But if you're a brand that is actually utilizing AI within your product, how do you go about communicating it? Chris Hook is the person with the answers from Cadence. Chris, thanks so much for being with us. A well, pleasure to be here, Doug. Great. And full disclosure, we recently completed a media tour for you where you were announcing the first AI-enabled supercomputer. Uh, yeah, the first AI-enabled supercomputer for, for design. Um, so this is a uh, really a new initiative that we have, the, the Millennium Platform. And um, really what makes this special is its ability to um, to accurately model using computational fluid dynamics. Um, it uh, uh, optimized, for example, chassis for race cars or the optimal cooling for the data center or um, the physical property of, of Levi's Stadium itself, which, of course, we were doing our satellite media tour from Levi's Stadium. Uh, Levi's is also a, a partner of ours, um, and we've been working to help um, make their, their data center and their facility more uh, efficient, um, really by modeling its physical dynamics and helping them to, to optimize it. Now, I think uh, it gets arcane really quickly when you start talking about CFD and, and what that means. Right. Um, I think for the, but as you start to uh, bring that to a broad audience, really what you're talking about is how we're making things, uh, how we're making uh, consumer devices, buildings, cars, automobiles, uh, better, faster, and cheaper uh, using AI. Because that's really yes. what, what it's about at the end of the day. It's not um, just about the cool factor of AI, and there's always a, a market for that story. But it's really, um, how are we going to change the the lives of the uh, the everyday viewer? How did you approach thinking of a way to just launch? And obviously, you did a lot more than the media tour on that. But what was the approach? Is the, How do we get people to understand what this means. How do you go about that? Is there a specific process you use? The running discussion leading into the uh, the Millennium launch is, look, let's let's go and call up our moms, or better yet, somebody else's mom, um, and uh, you know, shoot for someone sort of in the kind of retirement age, and and say, look, we're going to tell you, I'm going to tell you all about what's going on with this computer, and um, you know, judge the reactions from that. I know one of our one of our spokespeople did that. She said, okay, I'm going to call up my mom and. Tell her all about it, and see if uh, and, and see what's resonating, what's relevant, what isn't. Um, you know, there's a there's another saying that I'm sure you're familiar with. It's um, if you can't explain it to a ten year old, um, you don't really understand it yourself, and you, it shouldn't be anywhere near broadcast. So I think you have to you have to you really have to go in there with how are we going to democratize it, um, but do it in a way that that keeps engagement. So it's like okay, we have to simplify it, but if we don't keep it really, really, really concise, we're gonna lose a broad audience. Now we see here AI being talked about all the time and you raised the idea of asking your mom, which seems like a pretty good piece of advice, but a lot of times companies are looking to reach younger audiences and maybe they're more facile and aware of it, or maybe not. Sometimes we make false assumptions. Do you look at targeting different age audiences and other audiences differently? Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, we look at different um, age audiences. I think we look at, obviously, um, you know, we're a very uh, technical digital twinning company, very much focused on really B2B. So um, a lot of our narrative really is focused on, okay, it's the automotive manufacturers or it's the um, the aerospace and, and defense companies. And, and we're speaking largely to engineers or people who uh, manage engineers or have an engineering background. Uh, so, so a lot of our narrative is very trade focused, um, is very technical focused, is very customer focused, is very user focused. I think where we're starting to evolve and other companies like us are starting to evolve is, okay, that's, that's great. We, we have to do that. But now we have an opportunity to go that one level up and or two levels up and tell that story to a broader audience. But most of the time I would say we're delivering a very technical narrative. One of the things that's interesting, a lot of people when they hear AI, they think chat GPT and great, you can put some questions in, get answers quickly, but you're actually looking at, and it's probably not just you, many companies are looking at 
how it's sort of spearheading and shepherding product development. Is that a key part of where you see AI being used? And where else do you see that it might be going that we don't know about? Absolutely. Um, and it's really interesting that you mentioned, uh, you know, chat GPT, that really is, um, you know, often people will say, well, I don't really understand AI, but oh, I know, I know chat GPT. Um, so, you know, we have some technology called Cerebras that, um, that allows chip designers to use AI to develop uh, semiconductors, um, higher quality, uh, quicker time to market and at lower cost. Um, so what I do with when I'm talking to um, family members or a broad uh, marketing audience, I said, look, you understand chat GPT. Think of what we're doing here as chip GPT um, using large language models, natural language commands um, to um, to sort of simulate and optimize chip designs. And we have seen a large curiosity in the media on campaign seems more and more about what organizations are doing about AI, what they're surveying about AI, how it's gonna help employment or hinder employment. There's a lot of issues involved. Does that come into play when you're coming up with your communications plan? Because there might be sensitivities out there, whether accurate or not. Oh, we have to be very um, careful. I mean, for example, we are deploying more and more AI tools inside the company um, to help with things like, um, you know, to help with things like, like sort of, like say, crafting a uh, crafting a blog or crafting a story, or and it's not that you take the human element out, but um, you AI is sort of becomes your your co pilot, your your assist, and you you have to be very careful because you have to say, okay, well, where was that algorithm trained? Was it trained on our own material? Uh, is it trained on open source material? Is it or is it trained on copyrighted material? Um, so you you never want to be in a situation where you've leverage um, AI to help you create a piece of content, but then you find out later that um, that it's done something in violation of a copyright. So you so you, you have to be very thoughtful and, and have a deep partnership with your, your legal team on, okay, well, what you guys have done the research, you really drilled into it. What are the risks of using technology A versus technology B? Um, so, so we're, we're, we try to be um, very, very cognizant of that, you know, we're kind of in this wild west of AI and AI content creation, but how do we make sure that at the end of the day, we're not going to get a product that um, is, uh, is infringing on copyrights. Yeah. And that form of AI almost seems like it's Google search on steroids, if you will. Do you have any final thoughts, pieces of advice for other communicators, whether they're brand or maybe on the agency side who are working with companies that are deploying AI, any advice for them? Most AI technologies, um, at least the highest value AI technologies are right now are typically B2B technologies in a lot of ways. Um, and I, I think that, that if you're, so if you're marketing AI from a B2B perspective, um, I think you always have to have this parallel track of, okay, um, let's not confuse our customer message um, with our, our press message. Let, let's make sure that whatever we're doing sort of from a, uh, a core user marketing perspective that we can ab abstract that up and tell it to a broad audience because um, you, know, you, you rely on your employees um, to help get your message across. You want to engage them. You want to engage their families. You want the word of mouth about your technology to get out there. You want to be able to, to engage a, a broad cross section of media and other audiences. You want to be able to engage investor audiences. So what I would say is, as you're thinking about your core user messages, absolutely be thinking about how do we abstract it to a higher level. That's fantastic advice, Chris. Thanks so much for sharing your great ideas. No, it's great talking to you, Doug. 49ers definitely had a great season, even though they couldn't get the big one. I know you're a sponsor of them, as you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was hard to it was hard to watch. It was so disappointing, but Doug, we'll get them next year. <laughs>